John Lennon and Stuart Sutcliffe were close friends. John admired Stuart's look and wanted him in the band, although he could not really play an instrument. When the early Beatles went to Hamburg, they met Astrid Kircher and Klaus Foreman. She was responsible for revamping the Beatles' dress and hairstyles, giving them a much cooler look. The books and movies tend to put forth that Lennon deeply admired Sutcliffe for his personality, looks, artistic talent, and temperament, and that when he saw Astrid and Stuart together, he also wanted a relationship with a woman as close as their relationship was. One of Stu's art school friends told Stu to drop music and concentrate on art, since Stu was a gifted and accomplished artist. Stu left the band in July 1961 and went back to art and sculpting. Stuart Sutcliffe died from a brain hemorrhage in April 1962. The cause was unknown, but there are several stories about Stuart's head injuries. The main one is that he was in a fight in January 1961 after performing at Latham Hall. Early Beatles manager Alan Williams stated that he was either kicked in the head or thrown against a brick wall head first. He flirted with some Teddy's girl during a gig, and when he went out back alone to stow his gear, he got jumped by Ted and his friends. Lennon and Pete Best rescued him from his attackers. Lennon suffered a broken little finger and Sutcliffe received a fractured skull. Still refused to go to a doctor but soon began to suffer debilitating headaches. Pete Best was also to recall the Latham Hall incident. He said, when we'd done our session and came off, we changed which didn't take an awful lot of time because we basically played in which we stood up in. Stu went out followed by John and myself. These lads started a fight with Stu after picking on him. We got to know about it because some people ran back to the side of the stage where we had come from and said, Stu's getting the living daylights knocked out of him. So John and I dashed out. We threw a couple of punches, sorted things out and pulled Stu back in again. Then we turned to the lads and said, what the hell's going on? What the hell are you picking on him for? He hasn't done anything. We're only here to do a job, we're playing, so go away and behave yourselves. And it was left at that. According to a report in Sunday's Independent, Stuart Sutcliffe's sister Pauline claims she has evidence that John Lennon was responsible for the death of her brother, the cause of death having been a kick or blow to the head. She said that Stu and John got into a row when Stu told John he was staying in Germany to marry Astrid and return to art school. John was known to strike out at people he loved. She also claims that Lennon and Sutcliffe had a homosexual affair and that Sutcliffe and Paul McCartney were rivals for Lennon's affection. Stu and Paul are also known to have come to blows on stage more than once because of assumed jealousy over John's attention and Paul's frustration that Stu just didn't care about improving his skills with the bass. In his discredited The Lives of John Lennon, Albert Goldman also alleged that John himself had attacked Stu and caused a brain tumor that killed him. Except, of course, that Stu died from a hemorrhage and not a tumor, and the rest of the book is littered with errors and inaccuracies. Lennon only mentioned Stuart in one interview done for Hunter Davis' book in 1968. He said, I looked up to Stu. I depended on him to tell me the truth. Stu would tell me if something was good and I'd believe him. We were awful to him sometimes, especially Paul, always picking on him. I used to explain afterwards that we didn't dislike him, really. If anyone would know what happened, Astrid would. She was with Stuart during the time he had his head seizures and was with him when he died. She portrayed the big fight incident with Stuart getting beaten not by Lennon, who was not that good a fighter anyway, but by people that Stuart and John had heckled in the pub. Astrid Kircher describes John as freaking out when he learned of Stu's death. John then insisted on seeing Stu's studio, and while there, she took several photos. Also, Alan Clayson, with whom Pauline co-wrote Bagbeat, the film based on Sutcliffe's life with the Beatles, dismissed the claim, saying it was a direct contradiction of conclusion she came to with him. We concluded that Stuart wasn't beaten up by John Lennon. His condition was brought on by an overuse of amphetamines, he said. Mr. Clayson believes Sutcliffe was only ever involved in one significant fight, at Latham Hall, Seaforth, Liverpool, in early 1961. On this occasion, he said, the only involvement Lennon had was to wade in and help him. So what caused the fatal brain hemorrhage? The autopsy discovered that Stuart had been bleeding into the right ventricle of the brain, but what was the underlying cause of it for such a young man seems to remain unclear.
Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ringo, folks. <laughs> well, what can I say? And goodbye you to know. all of them. <laughs> Well, this is Ringo. Everyone seems to have said everything here, so I'll just sign off by saying cheerio and best of luck from the Beatles.